Hi everyone and welcome to a pick a card reading. The subject of this particular reading is divine guidance and I intended to make it a temporal, meaning that it is not linked to a specific time frame. It can be valid anytime and it tends to look at the big picture of your karmic path. But other than that, it doesn't really have any specific subject. And I also intend to create other uh, temporal readings with certain subjects in the close future because these uh, temporal readings can be valid anytime, anywhere. And also, people can also come back to them and listen or re-listen to the messages even after they progress more on their path and their journeys. So I personally think that a temporal readings are much more useful than ones tied to a specific time frame. The instructions are simple as always. Just take a couple of seconds or as much as you need and look at the five piles of cards and then choose the one which sparks up your intuitive senses the most and then just jump straight to the interpretation you can find the timestamps both in the description of the video and the comments below. For those of you who have chosen the first pile, your cards are the Hermit, the Two of Cups and the Three of Cups. For you guys, all of these cards indicate that it is the love life, romantic area of life, partnerships and relationships that this specific guidance goes for. So this means that that area of life is really important for your karmic journey. And it also means that perhaps in that area is where you receive the most divine guidance for. Because regardless of how you look at this consciously, well, this specific area is the most important for your soul and that is where it has to express its power, its influence the most. Now, first of all, the Hermit represents that a lot of your connections with people, very important people in your life, like very close friends and past relationships, were agreed upon to be formed even before you were born in this life and this existence in this form. So you guys pretty much have always been at the right place at the right time to meet or come across one way or another these karmic, these fated relationships and connections. And of course, usually these were born out of a common either interest or a lucrative purpose a hobby, a worldview, a life philosophy that you shared with others and that's how one way or another they got attracted into your life. So you might have been a very helpful and constructive influence in the lives of these people regardless of how the relationship turned out in the end. So the hermit also indicates that many times you ended up being the sacrificial lamb. For example, you might have met one of these important figures in this existence, in this life, when they needed your influence, your positive contribution to their lives the most. Or it could be that one way or another you helped them heal, you helped them regenerate, you help them find their perhaps deeper meaning. It could even be perfectly true that you help them professionally with your skills and talents, with your studies, you advise them. But because this hermit kind of represents that it was always you giving, it was always you who did the work, who put in the effort, even if it's just a psychological energy like counseling someone, being there for someone, comforting someone, still it kind of drained you and some of those people even turned against you or the relationship didn't end in a very harmonious way. So this left a lot of 
burden, a lot of heavy karmic energies on your past, which also means that you kind of had a moment in life, or better said, maybe not just a moment, but a good couple of years, or for some people even more, up to perhaps nine years, where relationships were really, really blocked, You just didn't really trust people. You weren't really motivated and inspired to make new connections. You struggled to keep those connections which you already had as healthy, as reciprocal, as fair as possible. But because the past was so very heavy, you kind of always attracted the wrong kind of people in your life. So this caused a massive snowboulder effect in your personal life where almost everyone from your past one way or another disappointed you. Everyone from your present may have felt so very meaningless, so very uh, like empty relationships and you just didn't trust the future. So this was like a hermit phase in your life where you just kept to yourself But not in a very harmonious way, but rather in a defensive way, in a secluded way, isolated way. And another layer of this, maybe some of you guys have been doing professions where, like it or not, you were connected with people all the time. And that also put a massive strain on your relationships and your interhuman connections. Because that was just another form of servitude, another form of giving and sharing and doing all the work. And, you know, as human beings, we cannot 100% respect the boundaries between our professional lives and our personal lives. Some of those people who you worked with might have had a very powerful impact on you, either in a positive or negative way. And also, a lot of people who were embodying the self-victimization energy was part of your life, and that was also a massive downside to, to the past. And of course, you feeling misunderstood, very lonely in your life, even though you were surrounded by very many people, and it just emotionally kind of shut you down. And as I said, everything led to that hermit phase, Now, that doesn't mean that physically you were distant from people or you ran into a cave and stayed there for a couple of years. It just means that emotionally you did not permit important connections to exist in your life, in your mind and especially your heart. There was a lot of doubt and of course there was a lot of fear which was absolutely justified. But this hermit stage was also an invitation to deeply regenerate your unconscious mind, especially to look back at the past from a more detached perspective, from a more spiritual perspective, so to say, and to see that all those moments when you were disappointed, when you were let down, and of course you were also used one way or another, Those weren't anything bad. It was just a karmic contract. So hard feelings or having high expectations to receive the same what you have done in return. Well, it was this expectation that really disappointed you. Because at the beginning, especially when you were younger, especially when you were much more active, socially speaking... And you also had a very strong magnetism to attract people in your life. Well, you would expect everything to be fair to get back what you give, regardless from which perspective, emotionally, materially, or whatever. But it took that hermit stage for you to truly embody soul-level maturity and to be able to find forgiveness in order to to be able to release all those unmet expectations, to forgive yourself for saying yes, 
even when you should have said no, and forgive others for simply not living up to what you expected. So in the present moment, this Hermit card represents that you are regenerated, you are healed, you somehow got back that innocence of yours, that purity, that powerful sensation that you are interconnected to everything, that you are in your state of flow. And because of so much inner work, so much self-study, and many of you also researched certain topics regarding psychology, parapsychology, perhaps archetype, everything that kind of reveals how our inner structures, inner pattern, the psyche, the mind works. And you really, really needed that information to understand why you feel certain things when you feel them. And most importantly, how to set certain boundaries which simply cannot be crushed by anyone unless you allow it. So as I was saying, because of that deep understanding of the self, you no longer fear any relationships, any connections, You are no longer blocking other people out from your life. But of course, because you have this inner power, because you have this authority now, you no longer have any problem expressing who it is that you are, what your life views are, what it is that you can accept in your life, and what is which is a big no-no. And it is exactly this inner self-mastery And also the fact that there are no longer any hard feelings directed towards the past, especially from a relationship, romantic perspective. You manage to understand why things happen the way they happen and that certain things were simply karmic and you just played a role that you agreed to. And also that role and fulfilling that duty also taught you a lot of valuable karmic lessons, especially what not to do, what not to permit other people. And more importantly, it's absolutely fine to hold your own sovereignty, your independence, and time spent with yourself on the top of priority lists in everything. Uh, May it be your material life, may it be your relationships, may it be your daily routines, you always need time for yourself and with yourself. And you no longer allow anyone to disconnect you from your inner truth. And this, as I said, this changed absolutely everything. You are already in a state of flow and you can manage perfectly because you know how to filter your connections and certain heavy blockages from the past are gone. So it is a really, really good sign because the hermit is also a seeker. He seeks the truth. He seeks enlightenment. He seeks a deeper meaning in everything. And one of those things in life which your soul came here to experience in a deeper way is love, partnership, and union with another person. And this also explains the hermit in the past. Well, in order to be able to identify or simply know what healthy love, a truly harmonious relationship is, well, first of all, you have to know the opposite of this and all of its versions. Sometimes... It is intellectual incompatibility. Sometimes it's emotional one where one side is very mature and deep and the other one is the opposite. Other times it is physical incompatibility which makes a relationship disharmonious. So one of the biggest lessons for you of the past was that many times love and pure good intention is not good enough. You have to have a lot of things in common with someone who you would form a relationship with in any sense, not just romantic relationship, any kind of partnership, even friendship. So if you don't have something very stable, something very 
important for both sides in common, well, chances are it will not work if you want to take it to the next level, as in the deepest meaning of connection and relationship. And also another big karmic lesson that you have learned and are embodying right now, well, the Two of Cups also represents that before in the past, you might have thought of yourself that you were not really lovable, you were way too difficult, you were abnormal in so very many senses that people might find it difficult to accept you, to work with you, to have you in their lives. And now it's the total opposite of that, where you kind of woke up to the truth that actually out of everyone, you are that kind of person which actually envisages love and partnerships and connections the healthiest, fairest, most equitable way. So even though some people might tell you that you're way too idealistic, especially in this day and age, well, if that is what you're looking for, if that is what authenticity and honest love means to you, well, then you are not actually wrong. You are kind of right, and it is your perception and vision about a harmonious connection that might lead to something truly significant for the long-term future. Now, this is the point where this reading might mean different things for different people. The Two of Cups, for some people, represents that because they have healed and they have done all that inner work, they already found someone important, someone significant, and they already have that person in their lives, while others are still embodying the hermit, so they are still single and, I wouldn't even say looking, but rather waiting, because they know that something is very likely to happen in their life. They just feel it. They just know it. And this is where we get into that Three of Cups energy. Now, for those of you who have already found your other significant half, this is the time when both of you are already more than ready and able to take your relationship to the next level. And this next level might represent a new chapter in both of your lives where you either have to accomplish a big common dream of yours. For some people, it is as simple as moving into a new home or the home of your dreams while for others, having a child or another child, or perhaps setting up some kind of business where both of you are in it together fully. And even though this Hermit card represents that you're already seeking the most uh, appropriate, the most perfect, the most opportune version of this, so you're already on track and it will definitely come to you but as a new friendship or as a new connection, either with another couple, another family, or a smaller group of people who can either help you or welcome you or inspire you or simply offer you a very harmonious environment to accomplish whatever it is that you need to accomplish and also later on be part of this group. Now, for those of you who are single and still looking, well, the Two of Cups is pretty self-explanatory. This relationship that you have been prepared for karmically, so to speak, because it's not just an inner healing. A lot of other, perhaps synchronistic or more paranormal or perhaps supernatural Things have been taking place in your lives, all of which suggests that this is where the universe is guiding you. For example, all the time seeing synchronicities with the number two, as in partnerships, or seeing hearts everywhere, as in synchronicity, in an advert, on the street, on a car, on the radio, hearing a love song which always keeps popping up. And some of you guys have went through very um, profound physical changes where you might have 
changed something about your physical appearance. For example, certain people might have lost a lot of weight without any logical, rational explanation. Other people just felt this inner need to detox, to change routines, habits, to pay close attention to their physical health, to regenerate, to get into shape or to simply adapt a much more natural form of appearance. Well, just as you suspected, all of this happened in order to ready you, in order to prepare you for that special moment, which is without a doubt entering your life. It is coming, but it might catch you by surprise, because the Three of Cups suggests that this person might be an old but very old childhood friend who you never really got to know that well. There was a certain fascination between you two as children and you might not even remember this person that well. Or it could be someone who first of all appears in your life as a really good friend. But just as this friendship starts, where both you and that other person intend to, you know, form a friendship and not anything more, that will very soon turn into something much more. And when this happens, so for those of you who are in an established bond, when you take your relationship to the next level, and for those of you who are single and looking, find that very special someone well, that is when a totally new chapter of your life stories is going to begin. It will almost be like stepping into a new dimension where everything is different. And of course, in the most positive and delightful sense, because the Three of Cups is the energy of celebration, lightheartedness, joy, inspiration, feeling motivated, feeling okay with your life. And of course, because this is when you're no longer alone. You're no longer just an individual who needs to survive and, you know, ride through life. But you're part of a union. So the other person's strength and virtues and everything good about them complements yours. So that means a lot of power. That means a lot of spiritual gravity because... It is the strength of the two acting as one. So all of that is going to be like a massive completion, a feeling of wholeness. You have no idea what true comfort and security means until this next phase of your journey takes place and you can begin this new chapter in your life. For those of you who have chosen the second pile, your cards are the Ten of Wands reversed, the Ace of Cups, and the King of Swords. Now this energy is that of a radical change that took place in your life, and perhaps for a lot of people, this radical life change didn't even take place so long ago, where once this Ten of Wands was in upright position, meaning a lot of stress, a lot of pressure, meaning that life was not very enjoyable because you had so many responsibility, duty on your shoulders. It is basically the cross on someone's back that they have to carry, just that for you guys, most of the cross, symbolically speaking, of course, wasn't even yours, it wasn't due to your life and your life choices. It was either a responsibility that your jobs, your professional lives, the career that you have chosen placed on you, and the pressure kept mounting and mounting until it was basically way too much to bear. Or other people might have had certain responsibilities and duties to family members, to certain karmic relationship, maybe life partners, parents, children. For others, it could have been something very important 
for them personally in their lives, which took all of their power, focus, attention, or it could have been some kind of community work where you had a very busy and active social life, also career, professional life, leaving you very, very little time and energy for yourself, your emotional needs, your soul. Everything kind of turned into an autopilot where you just had to prioritize tasks and duties and and responsibilities, deadlines and so on. Of course, for another group of people, it could be that this Ten of Wands represents that they were born with some kind of talent, some kind of skill. They are really, really good or knowledgeable or very proficient at something. So they came into this life with a strong talent for something. And maybe it was that talent which burdened them because they felt responsible to do, to share, to be perfect, to perfect themselves, to keep on studying, etc. But fortunately, this Ten of Wands is reversed already, so you processed everything that you needed to process. It is almost like the person who you were 10 years ago and before was someone with a totally different worldview, vision, priorities, lifestyle than the person who you have transformed into right now. But of course, this doesn't mean that the past was horrible or life wasn't worth living. Everything that you have done in the past, especially those things which burdened you and perhaps put you under pressure, hurt you the most. Those were among the biggest blessings. But of course, in a twisted sense, because those hurt you the most, but it is things that hurt you the most, which actually guided you, inspired you, and gave you that inner strength to overcome your limits the most. So how you solved the situations everything that burdened you, limited you, everything that put extra pressure on you, well, the way how you got out of those situations speaks volumes about who you are on a soul level because you have done more than an exemplary work in this sense because even though you had to take those duties that heavy cross off your shoulders, you have done it in a very equitable very honest and diligent manner in the sense that you didn't let anyone down, you didn't run from any duty, any responsibility. You simply worked your way until you found any kind of opportunity to move on or basically for a lot of people, they sacrificed that part of their lives. And it was a sacrifice because the pressure and the responsibility The duty feeling just burdened is one part, but the material benefits, for example, if it's a career or a job, or being a relevant member of society, of a group of people, circle of friends, being the wisest, being the most relevant person, well, that is a kind of reward in itself, and it is that part which you had to sacrifice. And this leads to the present where the predominant energy right now is that Ace of Cups. Well, this basically means emotional awakening. It means emotional maturization in a very profound way because you discovered that the burdens were only there as long as you accepted them in your life, as long as you felt responsible as long as you allow this sense of duty that, astrologically speaking, the inner Saturn of yours to keep you under control. Because it might not have been a specific person or situation which shackled you down, but it was your sense of duty, shame or guilt, or this fear of disappointing other people, which kept you in that game for a lot of years. 
So emotional freedom came with the epiphany, with the realization that certain obstacles are only there in your life because you accept them, because you feed them, because you want to keep them in existence due to fear, shame, guilt or self-sacrificial tendencies or for in some cases this perfectionism where you just have to do better, more, more masterful. It had to be perfect. It had to reflect your level of knowledge, mastery, the work that you have done to achieve that level of skill. So this Ace of Cups is a total contradiction to this. It is when you kind of know that you have everything that you could possibly ask for inside of you, your way of thinking, your mindset, your feelings, and this powerful emotional maturity combined with the innocence and naivety of the inner child. So what a dichotomy in order to be happy in life. And that is what you seek right now in order to make your happiness permanent in order to make this happiness, this emotionally free and empowered state permanent, basically to live your bliss. The problem here is that certain things that you had to sacrifice, give up on, terminate, everything that put a lot of pressure on you, well, materially speaking, or as in opportunities, those Things or people who you had to sacrifice, give up on, have not yet been replaced. So some of you guys might be seeking a source of livelihood or income which can support who you are right now, which resonates with your new lifestyle, with your new um, life goal. And also what is really important for you is to be able to share all of this. So you also want to do some kind of work or livelihood or income where you can also share. And the universe advises you through this King of Swords that the creational power, whatever it is that you seek, well, it is without a doubt in your intellectual sphere. Now, what does this mean? Well, it can mean that Either you still have to come up with the right idea, but that is definitely on its way. It is just a question of divine timing. Or that you have everything that you need in order to intellectually create a new path for yourself or perhaps co-create if it's something spiritual. Because, for example, technology, internet, the way people share the way people connect to one another, well, this offers you an opportunity which no other generation before us have had in this manner. And also, this King of Swords can represent re-specialization where perhaps a teaching career or something which has to do with mentoring, training, share your experiences, expertise with others might be the path forward or if it's you who has a certain kind of qualification already or a certain kind of expertise which you haven't really actively used in the past, well, that can be one of the keys towards success. So if whatever it is that you need in your life to give you the means to enjoy living life more freely, experiencing all the small and big pleasures of life, this Ace of Cups, well, it is either already within your grasp, it is already somewhere in your intellectual sphere, just being born, the idea is creating itself, or very soon in the quite recent future, some kind of communication, synchronicity, being at the right place at the right time is going to enter your life where it will lead you to where you need to be. As they say, nothing happens without a reason. So your life change and 
all this inner work that you have done, figuring out why things happen the way they happen, and doing all this karmic work and sacrifice and having a life of duties and responsibilities in the first half of your life, well, this means that this freedom, playfulness, and just being able to save your life more freely without these burdens has to come in the second half of your life. So that is definitely where your journey is taking you. So don't worry, don't feel anxious, don't overthink of how and when and where you're going to find your the solutions. Just trust that that is without a, a doubt what is coming next in your life because otherwise nothing would make sense. And also recall the moments when you went through those life changes, how difficult they were, but how much guidance, inner motivation, inner strength you had in order to accomplish them. So all of that had to have a good reason as well. So everything is leading you where you need to be, but know that it will take a lot of intellectual power, that which you have without a doubt. So there is absolutely nothing to fear. What you need to make your life complete, and for you to be able to keep that 10 of ones reversed for a long time is definitely the next step. For those of you who have chosen the third pile, your cards are the Ten of Swords reversed, the Chariot and Ten of Cups. Now this Ten of Swords reversed refers to the past where you might have had a really, really painful moment in life. It might have to do with some kind of ending, termination, defeat or failure. You might have lost someone dear to you. It might also represent a divorce. But the kind of divorce where it isn't a permanent state of war and conflict, hatred, etc. But the kind of divorce where, you know, you just had to separate because things didn't really work out. But you were still very how should I say, close friends or there was a genuine soul connection between you two because you've been there for each other in good and bad and those created really powerful memories. So the separation was hard exactly because there was no war, there was no, you know, anger, hatred, etc. There was only... The separation of the past, which was even more painful than an angry divorce, so to speak. But it can also mean the termination of a career, a job that you liked, a phase in life which was really positive at the beginning. It can also mean a status quo. It can mean so very many things, but it has to be some kind of loss, something that traumatized you. It could also be seeing someone beloved go through a lot of hardship, a lot of pain. It can also be an illness or maybe a moment of maximum depression or dark night of the soul. You know, when everything is bad, even spiritually speaking. But this moment in your life had a lot of lessons. It had a lot of eye-opening moments. And the way you responded showed a lot of deep things about you, which in normal circumstances you just couldn't have observed. You couldn't have possibly been so detached from the drama that you were experiencing and living. And because this was a dark night of the soul, you had no other means of escape or means to simply stay sane other than try to detach as much as you could and just look at yourself and your situation as objectively and as multi-dimensionally, so to speak, as possible. But where this Ten of Swords moment has led you was ultimately understanding and true genuine sympathy for yourself, 
where that sympathy is not just, you know, emotional, it is not just the right thing to do, but it is also very rational. And because it makes sense both to the mind, soul, spirit, and also the heart, that is why it changed you quite a lot. It truly changed your way of thinking, your thought patterns, and how you used to navigate emotionally through life. But of course, this was the past, and the present is depicted by this chariot, which means that you have a lot of goals, you have a lot of ideas, plans, desires for the future, you're ready to create, you're ready to conquer higher ground, you are aligned with your purposes, you are aligned with your soul path, the lessons of the past are learned and embodied, and it is the wisdom of the past and the experience, and also the anticipation and excitedness for the future, which is steering your chariot. So the two horses which pull the chariot represent these two powerful inner forces that are actually animating you right now, and you are definitely on the right path. Even though the ride sometimes is a little bit bumpy, because what you are truly seeking, and perhaps you might not even know this consciously, is to finally step into your true soul level comfort zone, that Ten of Cups, where everything in your life finally makes sense, everything is as where it should be, you can keep everything under control, and by this I mean a harmonious control, not in the sense that everything in life has to be under your control, and things have to work the way you think and you want, It just simply means that you have everything in your life, not just to cope, but to preserve a state of emotional well-being, especially with those things which you really love, with those people who you truly love and appreciate in your life, and that is control to you, simply being able to have that well-being each and every day of your life, being able to cope with all of life's other kind of problems, obstacles, inconveniences. In other words, just being able to live life in a very positive and optimistic way, regardless of the obstacles and challenges. That is your true comfort zone. And you have done so much in order to accomplish this, to achieve this. As I said, the chariot, you are on track, you're heading there, you're going there, that is your destination, and nothing is able to stop you right now, because the inner forces are pulling your chariot, which means inner harmony, which means that you're absolutely fine with yourself, you have discovered whatever it is that you needed to know in every perspective, you have the dreams, you have the plans, You have a lot of things figured out that which should be figured out and a lot of things which you know that don't depend on you were surrendered and released. So that means that you already attracted a lot of divine guidance, a lot of divine power to fuel your purposes, to guide you, to steer you. So the only advice that the universe is offering you is For you to stay on that chariot, even if the road is bumpy, even if there are going to be moments when you have to stop and rest a little bit, and even when the chariot goes so very fast, quickly, spontaneously, instantaneously, that you don't even know what hit you, it is still getting you where you need to be, where you desire to be, where you wish to be. And the Ten of Cups, without a doubt, also means that your well-being, your comfort, your emotional security is going to radiate to everyone important and special in your life. So you're not just doing this for yourself, you're also doing it for your very best friends, for your family, 
and also for your future friends. So do not let anything stop you whenever there are going to be moments of perhaps stagnation or when you need to rest, it's absolutely fine. That doesn't mean that your journey stops. It means that you're just readjusting, perhaps taking a shortcut or just feeding those inner horses, symbolically speaking, of course, with a little bit of motivation, with a little bit of passion and spark. So your chariot is still pulling you where it is that you need to be in life. So just trust yourself, trust your journey, and naturally trust the past, especially everything that you have learned from the dark night of the soul. For those of you who have chosen the fourth pile, your cards are the Judgment, Two of Coins, and the Hermit. The fourth pile might go out for certain people who have had a very powerful awakening in the year 2020. This might also have a lot to do with the coronavirus situation and with the world crisis, basically, that became so very obvious and part of our lives in that very fated year. And this is where certain aspects of your life and past and who it is that you used to be don't even matter as much before how you your life used to be, what your story used to be before 2020. Because it was this year which somehow changed and altered your perceptions, your life views, your personal philosophy and even spirituality in a way that there is simply no going back to how life used to be, perhaps, in all your past. So it was a very powerful life change, but a change which is not really material, neither is it just emotional, intellectual, spiritual. It is simply an awakening. It is simply your worldview or life philosophy or how you understand the meaning of life, of existence taken to the next level, but in a very sudden way, in almost like an inner epiphany, like an awakening. Something in your life which might have happened, or it was just a moment in time, a moment of synchronicity, or I'm not really sure what this actually means, but it was almost like, your mind finally connecting to the divine mind and a whole new face of the world opened up to you and it changed you in the most positive sense possible. Whatever this moment, this event was, for some people maybe it might have to do with something physical as well, maybe something expired a cycle ended in their lives, like maybe a big karmic closure as well. But regardless of how or what happened, it turned out to be a extremely positive awakening, almost miraculous inner call, which basically changed you. It just mutated or transformed your vision about everything and right now you're embodying the energy of that two of coins which means material change in the sense that however your inner worth whatever you find valuable inside of you has to also reflect on the outside so basically, even from a strict material, financial or social perspective, such a very powerful awakening, such a very powerful moment of opening up to a different side of existence, if we can call it that way, while well, it is bound to produce material changes in your life. And right now you're going through that material change phase. 
Now, this doesn't mean anything negative, neither positive. It is just a transformation. This is maybe where you're going from one type of job onto the other. Maybe this is where you want to be truly independent and not have to organize your time, your routines, your life, how other people or a company or whatever dictates it. Maybe some people are just getting out of a really bad material situation where it was exactly their minds and mindset which kept them blocked in a job they no longer wish to do. Maybe this is where some people have discovered a very healthy sense of self-worth and that is just healing their material situations, showing them possibilities, opportunities that are out there for them. And for others, especially those who are deeply artistic, maybe this two of coins represents that the world is also changing materially in a positive sense where certain areas which were not available to these artistic souls until this present moment because you know the world materially before the covid situation and all of the changes of 2019 and 2020 was dominated by gatekeepers so if you didn't have the experience the money the papers certain areas professionally and lucratively were just blocked off and this is also a powerful change because right now This chaos also means new opportunities for those people who were blocked in the past. So this transformation is going to last for about two years. And since this two of coins is in upright position, this means that it's not going to be up and down, up and down, but rather it's going to be a linear evolution where, of course, in the first stages... You just have to discover what, how you want to do next. Also, reality check what is available, what is possible and what isn't. What is stable, what can offer stability and what doesn't really offer longer term stability but it does offer something else, something beneficial. So, of course, the first stages are contemplation figuring stuff out, brainstorming, and then slowly but surely opportunities are heading your way and you're using them, you're working with them, and it builds up until you reach that hermit stage, which is really, really good because it means independence. The hermit doesn't depend on absolutely anyone. So this is where your path is taking you, towards financial and material independence. And also, this independence is very important with the judgment and its symbolism. So this awakening, this was one of the most important things that you have realized or the epiphany that whatever it is that you do in the future, it needs to offer you independence. It needs to offer you a lot of time that you can spend how you feel at the moment that you need to. And also, a lot of you guys perhaps want to spend time in nature or traveling or exploring or going to a specific place or maybe part of an event or a group or anything like that. And in order for you to be able to do this, you need independence. So this hermit doesn't really represent isolation or not having other people in your lives. Quite the contrary, there are going to be a lot of people in your lives, but still materially you need to be independent. So this is where your journey is taking you to. This is what is going on right now in your lives. The two of coins, this is where... Your inner value system is being reflected externally. So your relation with money, with material values, with your time, what you are willing to sacrifice for money and what you are not, all of this is changing. It is 
regenerating. It is reconfiguring your material life. So, of course, regardless of how you look at it, this change is a positive one because it will allow you to live in your truth and whatever that means for you personally. Some people might surrender a part of their income and embrace a more minimalistic lifestyle because they simply no longer believe in selling their time in order to accomplish something professionally or whatever. While other people are maybe sitting on, let's say, very ingenious ideas or talents which they are not using. And this is where the universe is guiding them towards for them to be able to perhaps earn or receive resources in a way that fuels their passion. So whenever passion is involved, nothing seems hard, nothing seems boring, nothing seems useless and in vain. And that already has material independence spelled on it. Because great passion does attract a lot of opportunities and it increases the chances in order to achieve success. For those of you who have chosen the fifth pile, your cards are the Eight of Air, Eight of Water and Ace of Fire. Now this is an oracle deck so the Eight of Air is Eight of Swords, the Eight of Water is Eight of Cups and the Ace of Fire is Ace of Wands. Now this reading is actually quite deep because this Eight of Air tells us that you entered into this life, in this incarnation, as a visionary, as a genius. You have something very, very unique about you. It is either your intellect, which is incredibly strong, it is incredibly um, active, you know, the number eight, just think about the octopus. It has eight arms. It can extend to any direction. So that means what a great ability of perception, ranging from the most subtle elements to the most empirical, mathematical, and even philosophical parts of reality. Your mind can perceive almost everything. It is so very sharp. It is so creative, it is a force to be reckoned with, without a doubt. While for others, it is not necessarily the mental sphere, but more like an incredible emotional intelligence. Like the word empathy is way too small to describe what you're capable of. But anyway, what matters is that something is extremely unique about you and that uniqueness was the curse but also the biggest blessing in your life. So in the past, you know, it was up and down. Sometimes it truly advantaged you because, you know, you embodied the archetype of the genius, of the visionary so other people could benefit so much in so many different ways from this. You also have an extraordinary capability to anticipate things, to foresee things, to calculate things, so to speak, so inner scenarios, and the unique way of understanding and deciphering reality. So maybe at your job or your career or in any other area of your life, it is without a doubt that other people truly benefited from this. But of course, there is the disadvantage and the downside, because not very many other people are like you, and some who are actually like you are not very good examples, because they might either be extremely pleased and happy with their superiority, so to speak, and they use it for egocentric purposes, or they manipulate others, or they live a life of self-centeredness. While other people who you know are also not very good examples, because they are victims to themselves, this uniqueness, their unusual way of being just 
attracted so very many bad things and challenges into their lives where they became victim each and every time. And just like them, you also had moments when this was the thing which made you feel so very lonely, misunderstood, or simply other people and the way they did things, lived life, or anything seemed to you very, so very superficial, so very illusionary, perhaps primitive and emotionally speaking, of course. So you kept feeling like a stranger, like an alien, like an outsider, like an outcast. And this was also the truth. So it wasn't even any misunderstanding or you not judging your situation correctly. It was actually because you were very honest with yourself and you just knew what you knew. But of course, you didn't let this stop you. You didn't let this get in your way. You were very understanding to a certain degree. But, you know, it still made you feel not so very good at times. And it did cause a lot of emotional blockages, disappointments. And most importantly, misunderstandings with the universe, with the divine. You just couldn't process why you... So on one hand, of course, you were extremely grateful to be gifted with this mind, with this emotional power, with this um, multi-dimensional perception of reality, if we can call it that way. Because, you know, you are never really lost and confused in life in the sense that you kind of see the big picture always. You very quickly figure stuff out. You don't fall victim to manipulation, deception, etc. So basically it defends you so very well. But when it comes to, you know, the karmic path and what the meaning spiritually of all of this is, well, that is where you do get confused because other people can be valid mirrors to who you are. So how are you supposed to Figure out your path in life. And if you look at that eight of water, the person there is swimming. But we don't know if it's a river, if it's a lake. We don't know the direction and eight. All eight directions. The eight sacred corners of the world. So where do you go? Where do you navigate towards? Where is fate actually guiding you to? It is that which you many times cannot work with. And also the other symbolism of this eight of water is the present moment where your soul, and I can say ever since maybe from your childhood, is really, really looking to find a place for yourself in the world. Now what that means No one knows really because that place can mean a physical place. It can mean a community, a family of your own, a person, a career. It can mean so very many things as long as it resonates with who it is that you are. It resonates with your purposes, with your vision, with your uniqueness. And basically nothing which might exist or have existed until this moment, didn't really resonate. So you had almost no options. You can do so very many things with your life, with your time, with your energy, with your ingenuity. There's absolutely no problem with that. But what resonates deeply? Well, you don't have a lot of options here. So you might not even care which area of life that is how it is going to be possible or how it is going to manifest. You just want to feel a sense of belonging, a sense of being connected to something which resonates regardless of what that is. And that something to be an active part of you and your life. This is what you're looking for. This is what truly motivates you in everything that you do. At the very core of everything, you just want to find your place in the world. 
And this Ace of Fire, the Ace of Wands, is a really good energy because it means that your passion is already guiding you there. You're almost there. You almost found it. You already had so many signs in the last eight months maybe of your life that you're almost there, that you're starting to resonate. Either it is you're getting signs or messages or you 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 have visions or a strong inner sense that you're starting to feel aligned and connected to something in the future even though you cannot see what it is yet. And this is what the Ace of Fire means. It is the opportunity, but at the same time, your passion. Your passion, whatever that is, whatever nature that might take. For example, it can be something romantic. It can be a creativity. It can be any kind of artistic passion. Or simply following your dreams, freedom, independence, whatever that is. It is already guiding you there. So your inner fire is starting to light up and it gets hotter and hotter as you fast forward into the future, as you start making your path towards finding whatever it is that your soul seeks in this life. You are already close. So the only guidance that the universe wants to give you is keep on swimming, keep on believing and of course, you already know that something is heading your way and that will happen. And when whatever finding your place in the world means for you personally, but whenever that enters your life, that is going to be a massive moment of rebirth when you are definitely going to feel so very complete, so very you and so very free in your life. That is when finally life is going to look like a playground with so very many different toys scattered all around that you can just try out, enjoy, explore. That is where the chapter that you're an alien or an outcast or you cannot find anything that resonates finally closes and the playful period where you can just experiment and experience everything passionately and intensely will finally begin. Well, this concludes today's Pick a Card reading. Thank you so much for listening. I do hope that you found it useful and that you enjoyed it. And in the close future, I'm going to create more temporal readings with certain subjects. So, if you are interested in any kind of specific subject, feel free to comment down below so that I can start working on those specific subjects in future videos. Thank you so much for listening again. Have a blessed and magical day, everyone. Until next time, bye for now.